Well, well, good morning, sir, friend. This is Old Mitty, man, coming at you again from Walker's Music. Yet another word for the day. Yes, friends, we give God all the praise and honor and all the glory. Let me adjust my mic over here. We give him all the glory as usual, and we thank him for each and every one of you. I got a message for y'all this morning, and uh, I've been battling with this old, matter of fact, I got a, my cold was, it, it, I'll call it, I don't want to say, I don't want to claim it, but the cold like went from my chest to my head. And then I got up with a bad eye. My left eye is not so good this morning. I uh, barely couldn't see the monitor on my laptop this morning, but we thank God as well as it is. But what I'm going to say to you this morning, I'm telling an all Christian alert. I'm calling all of us to an alert. I got something that I want to I want to just say, and I'm saying it out of love, because I don't want I don't want to be lost, and I don't want anybody else to be lost. And we already know what Jesus said. We know what Jesus said to his disciples. The commission was to his disciples. You read it. He said, "Go ye, go." That's what he said. Go, not sit in a church building. He said, "Go, people." Please, all Christians, listen. We got a whole lot of stuff going on that I can't get into with this video. It take too long. But I, I've heard a guy. I think his name was Michael Snyder. That I'm hoping I got it right. But uh, Michael Snyder, who you can say is a modern day prophet, and you got quite a few that say they're modern day prophet. It's not my job to say who's a prophet and who's not, because God can do what He wants to do. In other words, it's not our place to say and to judge who God has called to preach the gospel or carry the gospel, whatever. That's not our place to judge that. That's God. But what I'm saying, I'm saying alert to all those Christians. We think and we just both our job as Christians. Some of us just getting up on Sunday morning, going to church, maybe to a Bible study on Wednesday, Thursday night, and that's it. That's a, uh, in Sunday school, some of us made it. And, and and that's all. That's that's as far as it go. People, come on, please, please, please. That's not it. That's not it. We are supposed to be doing what Jesus told us to do, and that is to go. In other words, get our light burning. I always say we are reflectors of the light because Jesus is the light, and we are reflectors of that light. So what we need to do is get going. Jesus said, go ye into all the world. Now, let me tell you something. Some of us can't go to Africa. We don't need to. We, we can go to the grocery store downtown. In other words, Jesus was saying, let our light shine. Oh, man, 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 what you talking about? Well, how's your attitude toward people that don't think like you? Hey, come on. What's your attitude toward the homosexual? Hmm? What's your attitude toward the whole monk? What's your attitude toward the drunkard? And before you answer them questions, remember how we were once some of that too. All right. We were once, all of us were some of that. If you wasn't one thing, you was another. So that don't give you no right to judge another. What Jesus told us to do was go ye into all the world and what? Teach. He told them to teach, preach this gospel, the good news of the kingdom. Y'all, the good news of the kingdom, Jesus suffered, died, was buried, and rose again. He rose on the third day, stayed around him about 40 days, and then ascended back to the heaven. And he gave us the authority in this world. Now, let me tell you something. That's still the devil we have to deal with. Let me tell you, the devil was defeated at the cross, but he wasn't destroyed. This is still his domain because Adam sold out. But you and me as a believer, we are now redeemed from Satan vices. We are still susceptible. We're susceptible to some of the mess that he does. And we all can get tempted. Jesus was tempted in every way. Jesus was tempted in every way that we are tempted. But we don't have to yield to the temptation. But what our job is is not to go into a church building on Sunday. Set up and hoop and holler and shout and flip and turn and jump and, 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 and ride on chandeliers. No, 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 no. The church building, 
where it's where we as saints come together to refill and to refurbish and to build our muscles back up to get back out in the world and do what Jesus said. That's what the church is for. Oh, yeah, we about a choir stand and we got choir members up there singing and the preacher preaching and the deacon serving and everything. That's all good. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is after you do that for an hour and a half or two hours maybe, what do you do after that? That is what Jesus is looking at, people. He wants, you know what? Do you know we got a judgment seat that we're going to stand before too? Oh, yeah, a Christian's going to be judged too, but it ain't going to be to decide whether or not you go to hell or not because every Christian is going to be saved. But the judgment seat of Christ is going to be where you're going to receive your life going to be played back after you were saved and see what did you do. What did you do? What did you do for the kingdom? And we're all going to be rewarded according to what the work we have done. Now, my crime may not shine as bright as yours, especially if I hadn't did what you know. But it's not. It's beside the point of what we should be doing. We go to the church is just like our hospital. Come on, Christian. Let me tell you something. Alert, alert, alert. You all remember Lost in Space with little Will Robinson and that robot and Dr. Smith? Dr. Smith was always, he was smart, but he was always gets things messed up and in trouble and they have to be bailed out by, most of the time, the robot. Because why? The robot could concern, he could discern danger, danger Will Robinson. Danger. Well, this is, what the, this is what the church is to us as Christians. Let's, we go to the hospital every Sunday to get rebuilt from people that done stabbed us in the back. People done spit in our face and slapped us in the face while we are out on the journey. What? Let your light shine. Come on, people. Let me tell you again. Let your light shine mean it. We are not going to act. We do not act like the world. We once acted like the world. But since we've been born again, it is our walk with God now, every day, with the Holy Spirit as our guide and helper, to be not like the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You better read Romans 12 and 1 and 2. See, this is the, what we need to be doing. And you know what? If we let our light shine, I do believe. Let me tell you something. If we as Christians, would, if, that we that call ourselves Christians, if we would just let our light shine, you know what? We wouldn't have to say nothing to the people that are walking in the world. They will come to us. They will say, come, well, let me tell you something. You know, you don't tell me you a pear tree when I see peaches on the ground. Huh? Come on now, y'all. Walk with me in a minute. A minute. You don't tell I got a little cold, y'all. Just walk with me a little bit. You don't. You, let, me, let me take a sip. Let me take a sip. Mm. Excuse me. Had to take that sip. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, like I told you, I'm dealing with this head cold. You don't go to a pecan tree. And for you, there's a proper pecan. But you don't go to a pecan tree and expect to see peanuts on the ground. Come on now, y'all. Come on. You don't, you, 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 you don't go to an uh, apple tree and, and, and expect to pull bananas off it. So what we need to do as Christians, let our light shine. What we should be shining, people should see Jesus in us by the compassion that we gonna have when we see our brother in the duck in the drunkard house. You know, and I don't wanna say this here to make myself look big because God knows that's not the purpose of this video. But after I got tired of the alcohol in my life, alcohol almost destroyed me, y'all. Alcohol almost destroyed me. When I was in the military, I was in Germany. Stuttgart, Germany, they had to take me to 5th, 5th General Hospital. Stuttgart, Germany. When I was in the military, my whole blood was alcohol. Yes, whole blood was alcohol. And so when I got back stateside in 1996, I came full circle. Couldn't take it anymore. I didn't go to no rehab. I didn't go to no halfway house. I didn't go nowhere. I was right up there on front of my sofa chair. And I just... So Lord, I, I want to quit, but I can't. I said, but I know you can do it. I said, if, if you help me, I'll never take another drop. That was on March, I believe around March 17, 16, it was the third Sunday in March, 1996. I never will forget it. And from that day, when I confessed to the Lord that I wanted to quit but could 
That's when he stepped in. And people, he took it just like that. I, I mean, I sit here for you as a living witness. Jesus took it just like that. I never drank another drop of beer, whiskey as a beverage since. No kind of alcohol other than some churches use real wine for communion. It's fermented. They use that. But if that much a little wine gonna make you a devil, then you know you you ain't no hope for you no way. But other than that, from 1996 up until this present day, this past March would have been what? 20 years. 20 years clean of alcohol. And even to the cigarettes. Did the same thing back then. God, Jesus took it. I've been smoking, good God Almighty, I've been smoking ever since I was about 10, 11 years old. Experiment, but then I got to a real smoking. So I been, I was smoking like 30 years or more. Jesus took it. Just like that. 2007, haven't touched another cigarette. Now, how many years of that? That's what, nine, nine years? What I'm saying to each and every one of you, we as Christians, we need to let our light shine and let the people know what we have done. See, some of us, we don't want to tell what we have done. We don't want to tell how messed up we were. And therefore, we want to just go to the, 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 the one out there and that judge to pound them on the head with your Bible, talking about what I know. You tell them what you messed up. That's what they want to hear. And they can relate to you. Then you can introduce them to Jesus. Let them know that Jesus is the answer. Oh, yeah, I, I remember Andre Crouch wrote that song, Jesus is the answer for the word of the day. In other words, he is the answer for all this stuff and mess we in. And y'all, we're in a big mess. Christian, alert. Christian, alert. Come on, let's get about Jesus' business. Let's go out in the street and wherever we walk, let the people see Jesus in them. Now, what, what, what do I mean by that? By the way we interact with other people. Look, y'all. God loves all mankind. We should love them too. The dirty one, the smelly one, they may not smell that good. Take them home and give them a bath and give them some cologne and deodorant to put on. Whatever. Find somebody to help. See, that's our problem today, people. We as Christians, we don't want to help nobody. We want people to help us, but we don't want to come to nobody else's system. Amen. Amen. I just had to tell you that. Christians alert. This is me, the man. I'm going to try to have Bible study tonight, if the Lord say so. If I feel pretty good, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm hoping that I feel great and I do a Bible study tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern Time on uh, Blog Talk Radio. I'm going to try to do that. So y'all look for it. So remember now, Christian, alert, alert, alert. And as the old robot used to say on on uh, on, on the, the lost in space, danger, Will Robinson, danger. People, we're, we're headed for danger. And if something don't happen soon, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to cut it off. They got this here resolution coming up again at the UN, people. I'll let you know that. I, I found this out the other day through Mike, Michael Snyder. And I'm going to tell y'all something. They need to leave the land of Israel alone. They're trying to divide that land. And I'm going to tell you something. You better read Zechariah. You better read Joel. You better read. God is not going to have it. And I'm just praying that President Obama, our leader, does not have nothing to do with that. America got enough to repent of, and we're going to repent. I believe we're going to repent. But please, y'all pray, all Christians pray that they do not, President Obama and our congressmen and, and, and senators and whatnot, do not have anything to do with that UN resolution about the dividing of that land in Israel. It ain't no Palestine, it's Israel. You got to realize that it's never going to be Palestine. It's Israel. God said it, and we better leave it alone. Pray that, people. Peace and goodbye.